beginning. How are you today? Well. Well. Well, are you enjoying the rain? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I am Reverend Eileen Sloth. We have been together before, certainly recognize many of you who are here, and certainly see that the attendance is kind of like the church I attend, a little lower, but it's wonderful to have each and every one of you here. If you are watching us on live, is it? Yes. Yes, then um, welcome you too. I hope you have your cup of coffee and are ready to worship this morning. So, I'm not sure if I should say anything else. There we go. <laughs> Let us now prepare our hearts for a sense of gratitude and let us worship God. Let us turn to God in prayer. Breathe in this place, O oh Lord, by the power of your Holy Spirit to open our minds, unlock our hearts, enliven our faith. So that, we may, so that we may welcome the risen one among us. Amen.
the apostles continued to bear powerful witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and abundance great of grace was at work among them all. There were no needy persons among them. Those who owned properties or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds from the sales, and place them in the care and under the authority of the apostles. Then it was distributed to anyone who was in need. My sermon this morning, and I will be reading the scripture lesson, is taken primarily from the Gospel of John, which, after hearing the lesson from Acts, you might be very thankful for, since I'm probably not going to tell you the saga of poems <laughs> and give it to the church. No, that might not be a bad thing for any of us. Anyway, our Gospel lesson this morning continues the narrative of the resurrection. So, obviously last week, as Easter Sunday, you heard about the resurrection of Jesus for how, <clears throat> for the number, how many times in your lifetime? <laughs> and this continues on the same day. And it says, when it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Though the title of the sermon is not in your bulletin, I would title it Into the Upper Room. So I invite you now, kind of an intimate journey back to the day. And it would have been a Sunday morning, first day of the week. Well, it would have been a Sunday evening, Jesus rose on Sunday morning. The Sunday evening, where the disciples were locked away in the upper room. You could feel it. Fear. And we trembled with it. Fear you could touch deep and thick. So thick you could smell it throughout the room. Here we were, huddled together, alone in our misery. 
trying to figure out how. How could we have left him when the soldiers took him away? How could we have left him alone to die? How could we have denied him? How could we have betrayed him, each one of us, in our own way? We ran away. We've hidden ourselves away, knees quaking, guts churning, our heads aching. What have we done? What have we done? What are we going to do? We thought we were clear who the enemy was. The enemy, the Romans, Herod, Pilate. But now it seems clear that the enemy is inside us. Jesus, we knew him, we thought we knew him, we loved him. We pledged ourselves to him, to follow him, to die for him if necessary. And look at us, cowering in a room, waiting for what? For the soldiers to take us away? For some miracle to occur? Jesus had said over and over that he must die, but we didn't believe him. How could we? Jesus said he would rise again. What does that even mean? Jesus said he loved us called us friends. And how did we repay him? We left him, we denied him, we betrayed him, we ran with our tail between our legs. How do we go on from here, I ask you? How do we live a life torn in half, half here on earth, half in the hell that we have created within? What we know is that we are scared. Scared to be alive and scared to put ourselves back out in public where we might die. How, could, how can we get our lives back when we have so easily given it away? No, no, we must stay put, try to think. We must lock the door. We must keep out the others, others who could hurt us or kill us like they did Jesus. Jesus. Just the name pierces our heart. Maybe Judas had been right when he hung himself. He wasn't the only betrayal. His wasn't the only betrayal. Maybe death was only finishing the dying that we felt in our hearts. Wind blew through the cracks. A whistling sound was heard. Our heart stopped. What was that? Was someone outside the door? We didn't breathe. I ask you, how do you keep the enemy at bay when the enemy is inside? How do you stay where you are? How do you live when, how do you go on when the one person in all the world that could make sense out of everything is gone? How do you go on when you want to be free of the awful pain of the betrayal and the guilt? When you want to bow down and tell him, I'm sorry, forgive me. And even now those words seem so feeble. The women said he was alive. But how? Couldn't be, how could it? And as much as we want him here, what if in fact, what if in fact he is alive? come to us? What if he came to us and knocked on our door and said, let me in? Would we? Could we? What would we do? What would, what would he say to us? The wind blew again, strong and sure. Jesus. No lock can keep him out, no stone can hold him in the tomb, death can't hold him in the grave, no wrong can keep him out, no denial too great, no sin too strong to keep Jesus from the ones he loves. In one flash of a thousand moments, we knew our hearts would break for sure. This was it, the moment we'd hoped for beyond all hope. The moment we'd fear more than fear of death. What would his words be? 
Would they be words of condemnation? Words that would chide? Words that ridicule? Words of anger or revenge? What words would he use toward us? You know, words have such power to destroy. We know that. Or build up. And we knew we deserved the worst of them all. We knew too well what we would have said had we been treated the way we had treated Jesus. We waited a thousand moments and our hearts broke. They broke open into new life. The words he spoke were not words of anger or words that lashed out like the rip that had torn at his back. No, they were words of forgiveness, love, hope, and were life-giving. Do you understand the words that Jesus gives? Do you understand the words that are spoken by our Lord? Do you understand that even in the face of the most devastating acts of betrayal to the one that we loved, that the very words spoken that we heard and needed to hear are words that can bind up the wounds of our lives and can take a dying man, a dying woman, and breathe into them life itself. For the very words that Jesus spoke to us. Peace. Peace. Peace be with you. Not, how could you? Not, thanks guys. Not, I'm so disappointed in you. Not even damning silence. But peace be with you. And then he said, as the Father sent me into the world, now I'm sending you. The words were a bomb on our ravaged souls. They were healing in all that needed to be said at that moment in that place. The words weave themselves into our hearts, binding and healing them for all time. And the words gave us purpose to go forward with our lives. Healed with purpose, healed with God's purpose before us. Thomas, Thomas said it best, yes, even after needing to see Jesus' hands and side, as we had already seen ourselves, he said, my Lord and my God. Thomas said this in response to a love that knows no bounds or limits and understands that our deepest betrayals are really a killing of ourselves. Yes, our souls, and now your soul need to be bound up and healed. Do you understand that this is what Jesus does for each of you? Even as he did it for each of us. So this is where we begin again. This is how we begin to live again. In the midst of our pain and anguish, Jesus came and stood among us and offered us peace. A peace that made us whole again and put us to work. Jesus, I still find it hard to believe. Told Thomas that blessed are they who believe and yet do not see. My friends, we pass the mantle on to you, sitting here today, to be emboldened by his words of peace and forgiveness that make the soul whole again. People who believe throughout the centuries have been blessed have been moved by a power and force that have defied all explanations. Mountains have been moved from men's hearts. Logs have been removed from women's eyes. Hearts have been softened with Jesus' love. Souls have been won with forgiveness. Jesus, our Lord and God, has been preached, taught, and believed and lives have been lived with God's purpose by men, women, and children to today. The message has been passed on one by one until this moment. 
today until you. 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 Who believe yet have not seen have already been blessed in a way unique for even the disciples were not blessed as you and I are blessed to believe without seeing. Jesus sends us out to speak the same words that he spoke to the disciples. Peace be with you. Think for a moment what these words would mean spoken to a child. Peace be with you. Instead of words that tear and rip them apart. Think what these words would mean to you right now. Spoken in response to your bitterness, or fear, anger, or betrayal, faithlessness, or lack of faith. What would those words mean to you? Peace be with you. And not only peace be with you, but I want you to go out there and offer the same words of peace. Then think of what it would feel like if you were to speak those words to someone else who needed some form of healing and being set free. A neighbor, someone you work with, a friend who's in trouble. To be able to share those words of God that have been given to us. My friends, peace be with you is God's answer to us. Even when we have done something that splits us in two. I know it because it's been true for me. And I believe you may know it's true for you. So we leave this place today with a new word, with a new hope, with a new gift. Jesus sends us out, even as he sent his disciples out. He sends us, I dare say, quaking in our boots. Have you ever had your knees shake? You were so nervous. I remember one of the I took singing lessons, oh, years ago. And it was the first time I got up in church and sang in front of people. Now, I played the flute, or played the flute. And I was darn good at it. And it never bothered me to get up and play it, because I've done it so many times. The first time I say, I have never done a knocking of the knees like I knew that day. It's just, it was incredible. <laughs> I mean, I'd heard about it, but it was incredible. Anyway, he sends us out, quaking in our boots or knees knocking at the task before us, because it is a task, to bring peace to a world in need. But wait. Are we qualified? How many people think you're qualified? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. Yes, you are. God works in each one of us in a unique way that only we can be that person to another person or situation. You haven't lived this long without something in you that is a gift from God that can be used by God if you are willing to be used by God. Do we go alone? No. Never. Remember what happened in the upper room? Jesus blew the Holy Spirit upon those first disciples. Do you remember the story in, um, it's one of the prophets, Ezekiel, I think it was. Anyway, when he goes, God shows him the valley of the dry bones. Do you remember? I think that's where that song comes, you know. And they stood up. But were they alive? Do you remember? No. God sent the Spirit from the four corners and blew it upon those forms. And they became human and were alive. 
No, we do not go alone. Jesus has breathed the Holy Spirit upon us, and that Holy Spirit wasn't breathed upon the many, many, many years ago. The Holy Spirit continues to be active today in our lives because God isn't some static God. He's a God that is alive, is a verb, is action, is creative, is creating, and he does it through us. And some of us may say, believe it or not, even me. Even me. But Jesus does no less for us. He unlocks the door to our hearts and our homes so that we are emboldened to bring his peace to a broken people. The Holy Spirit is upon you and upon me. Now, I'm not going to say literally, get up, but get up. <laughs> Unbolt the door to your life. You who are dead are dead no more. You are alive. And as Jesus said so long ago, I say to you today, peace be with you. Amen.
our time of sharing joys or concerns this morning. Are there any that would be lifted up from you folks? Amen. <laughs> no leaks. What's his name, Jeff? Jim Smith. Jim Smith. I was told that um, Ron Hurt had a peacemaker. Mm -hmm. Does anyone know? His wife. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. He's doing well. He, he had some other complications to cause it, but he's, he's doing quite well. Okay, yeah. thank you. <laughs> so, shall we go into an attitude of prayer? Spirit, fall upon each one of us this morning. Those who are here, those who aren't here, those who are watching. those in our community, and of course beyond. There's no place that your spirit will not go. No place too dark, 
no place to more joy, that your spirit cannot enter in and bring life. Though we do certainly understand that life is taken. And we pray, God, this morning for Jim Smith, whose life was taken in the line of duty. And for all police who do risk their lives every day, we only pray your spirit would protect them. But we pray for Jim's family. We pray for Alvin Fuller's family and friends. We trust God that they have met in the arms of your love and your home. We pray for Jose Santiago. We pray, God, that the bacteria, that they can do something to stop it in order to try to remove it. You are the great physician. We pray that there is something that can be done. We pray your blessing upon the family. And pray your peace be with them. We pray for all those who are suffering from COVID. We lift up families who have lost loved ones sometimes multiple loved ones within the family. And we do pray, God, for the children who are crossing the border. There is so much, God, that needs to be done. So many places that we pray that your will will be done, a will built on love. And so we just lift up all these prayer concerns as we think of Ron, as he continues to heal from what is concerning to him. We pray for families here, we pray for families at home, we pray for our children. We simply pray, God, perhaps not 24-7, but let us be in continual prayer when we walk, when we drive. It doesn't matter. Lifting up those that we are concerned for so that they are ever in front of your being. We thank you, God, that Jesus blesses us with peace. Not just the first disciples, but even his disciples today, and the ones tomorrow. So let us be witnesses to that love. Let us step out of the fear that can so surround us and reach out in love, in peace, in healing, so that your world becomes a world that is built not on anger and division, but on harmony and love. All of this we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>
Now I would like to give you an invitation from your confession and pardon that you can find in your bulletin. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God. We confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, let us pause in silent prayer, confessing our personal sins to God. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love fell, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey, and set before us the way of life. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth is full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. By your great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your Son from the dead and to an inheritance that is imperishable, 
undefiled and unfading. Once we were no people, but now we are your people, declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ, who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always. And the powerful power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave us himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. On the day he raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread and in the power of your Holy Spirit, your church, has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast, we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, now and forever. And forever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Let us be in prayer with the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
Amen.
rise <coughs> as you are able. <laughs> and all the blessing that I pass it on to you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and bring you peace, now and always. Amen. Amen. Amen.